Right guys, so I've just recently propped that up with the prop and don't have my drill so I have the hand screw load in there to tighten up and this is actually my second coat of PVA. I already hit the ceiling the day previous so this gear should come up really really sticky. Um, I've decided along here I'm going to put a, a stop bead on um, right 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 the way around this, this whole corner right round because Unfortunately, this part's just too low to get away with it any other way, so that's what I'm stuck to. So I'm going to crack on and PVA the rest of this, and then I'll mix up my bond and I'll get back to this when I'm coating away at that stuff. So now that I have the scene and all PVA'd and it's nice and tacky, I've got my mix on, guys, and cracked on here. Just decided to start where I first started the PVA as it will take up that much better for me. Um, just checking the lights actually on there in case I need a bit more brightness. I will get some lights set up later on as this is quite a dark wee spot in the house so there's no great light coming in. But just really coating away, not, not putting too much on, just filling up to the highest points. And later on, I'll whiz around with the superproof spatula and give it all a quick straighten. Make sure your angles are nice and straight when you're doing things like this, guys, or as straight as you can possibly get them. And my idea here is to get everything coated on. And bar above the door where I had to prop it up, there's still a bit of a bend in that ceiling. So I'm going to actually tighten stuff up really stiff just to, to build that out. I don't want to be going. The stuff I've mixed nice and creamy, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna be trying to fill out too heavy with it, um, and I don't wanna be waiting for it. So a stiffer mix should pick up that bit quicker for myself. And also when I get everything straightened, I'm gonna then apply the beads here and show you what way I tackle that in a couple of seconds. But as you can see, I have no board set up. I think I talk about that later on in the video. But just working up down off the bucket, off a hop up. Not, not the, the easiest thing to do, but for a hallway like this, I didn't see a sense of using the plaster and stilts. Um, I think going in and out of doorways to board is quite awkward also, so not, not, the, the, not the most sensible thing to be doing either. So just thought, handy enough, just use it out of the bucket, get a nice coat on. Um, and I can feel what it's going like in the bucket as well, if it's setting too quick or not. And of course I'm using my good bond in here. And my idea is going to be to skim it with Carlite Ultra Finish. So you will have to wait to the end to see what the results of that are. Um, but, you know, I'm going to cover a lot of aspects here guys, throughout the whole, the whole lot. So, everything on, straightened. Time to get the beads done and like I said earlier guys get everything ready I had these beads cut ready and all and they possibly would have only needed a wee trim just to tidy them up but they're a lot easier to handle when they're they're a lot closer to the size you need and you can see this this make good button actually held it quite well it's very very sticky but I do recommend if you're gonna fit stop beads or any beads like this along an edge like that they even put Put a wee tiny bit extra on that corner so that you can press the bead up and it'll it'll embed itself and it'll bond in a lot better that way and give you time to get your extra wee coat on as well. So most times I will coat after I have plumbed the bead up and got it straight. Um, but this particular one I could see that I was going to need more in so I just went ahead and buttered it all up as is and just like I'm doing here I can see that I'm, I'm, I'm miles away just by eye so sometimes guys really do have to rely on what you can see as well and I do have to do this wee bulkhead as well as you've you seen earlier so I'll, I'll give it all a coat later on but just trying to get these beads set now as you can see beads are quite important to get set on a job like this because these are the things you really need to firm up you don't want to be trying to skim over these later when they're still soft so again you've seen I put the wee bit extra on so I could press it in and I think there's a bit of a snatter up here 
you need collides just throw them a bead down bad on the wall I know say the walls aren't being done but there's, there's like a, a bit of a snatter from paper and paint there so it had to come off and as you can see guys I'm not afraid to spend that little bit of extra time getting these beads on the way I want them because again once the stuff sets they're, they're not gonna be easily fixed um, you'll potentially have to rip them off and start again and if you rip beads off like this you'll not be able to use them again they'll bend and kink and twist they'll be no good to you so you're better taking that that bit of extra time and getting getting them right getting them set double checking them you know there's, there's nothing wrong with being that wee bit fussy on your beads guys and actually the straight edge is nearly too big for this but I can still give it a bit of a sight it's definitely too big for that one so I'm going to use the super proof spatula to pull me out of a yet another hole although there's no bubble on this one I'm just really eyeballing it and taking it from my long bead trying to keep them as flush as possible in the joint so gives you a bit of an idea you can also side it off the back door so it can and the good thing about the super proof spatula is it's handy to have a wee look and see what kind of coat I need off the beads so if it's heavy I can always bulk it out with a bit of bond now so now that I, I got the seating all bonded out straightened give it a wee quick flattening so I did so it's nice and, and flat it's time to, to brush my hair uh, to brush the, the ceiling so it's not as smooth as my head and um, basically just going to use the floor brush and just Here's, here's a good tip for you guys, see where it's really heavy, where you've had to build out, where I was straightening in the legs that corner. Just go really, really easy on it. Don't, don't try and score it too, too much in them areas. Um, again, same goes for if you're doing the legs and beads, go really gentle on them. Um, you can wash them down later and scrape them down later too, but you don't want to knock them off. You've got them all nice and straight and neat, same as all these angles. You don't want to be pulling it and then you have to scrape it all later. So could be tip face but again you can let this pick up and head up the float but I find the brush is lovely and gives me a lovely key for the next coat. I have a wee bit of time guys as I've, I've got this all brushed up but if you're waiting about guys make sure you spend your time wisely you know don't be sitting playing on your phone and you can get around make sure all your angles are clean I've still go two coats of skim but why, why wait around? Get, I've got all my angles cleaned. I've wiped down the walls sort of quickly. Haven't spent loads of time on it because it is going to get more staining. But this scene is actually starting to pick up now. But like I say, if you are waiting, spend your time wisely, guys. Get your buckets filled up, ready to go. Your plaster out of the van. Plaster you don't need. Bonding, for instance, back into the van. Um, you know, get everything set up so that you're, when you mix, it's just go, go, go. Um, and then in between trials, you can clean up walls, buckets, whatever you need to do. You just can get them all cleaned up then. But this is starting to colour, so I'm all set up and I'm going to start mixing here in probably another five minutes. And I'll give you some footage of that too, guys, getting this all laid on and trialled up. This is me lashing on now. I'm not going to delay too long. I'm going to get this stuff on. And no, the still any new treasures are at it. <laughs> new treasures don't last long in this game, guys. And so, yeah, I'm gonna get my two coats on quickly. And um, it's the same bucket. Uh, somebody was asking me before if you're new to the game, and um, for sure you might want to use smaller buckets and do two two mixes so that your next coat's fresh again. You know, a wee bit lighter over the top. Um, but really, I'll be fine by the time I get over there. And back over here again, I'll be able to coat this twice, lovely. Um, so far there, it's coating very nice, but I'll crack on. And another wee tip guys for coming in the winter here, well, we're in the winter, but always when you're coming in the winter, lights, you can see how bright this place is, I have lights down there. So, they all keep us right, um, give us a bit of brightness, especially in the hallway, I've only really got that back window, and there's a window way up behind us here but it's like that some good light in but the nights are they're very very good um, 
broke the stand off them. I think that happens to all them things. But yeah, I don't want to waste too much time. I want to get this on because that stuff there just just sort of went with a bang all of a sudden. Bit bit like their their skin it sort of just just goes pew, like a like a flesh set. So I don't want to hang about too much. I think the suction's actually eventually kicked in. I think my PVA I did two coats really helped it back well. So another thing for you guys when you're you're learning this trade, just to control your suction as best you can. But let's get get this over to this other camera, a better angle. Oh, and yes guys, I'm putting Carlite Ultra Skim over the top of Make Good Bonding. And like I said previous in the video there, this is a wee bit of an experiment. I do believe it will work. Seems to have worked bringing it in there when I mix the, the bonding with with uh, the Make Good Bonding with Carlite Bonding and then Carlite Skim over the top seemed to work great. So I think this one too will continue for your shot. Again if it does fail, it's not the end of the world. I'm sure my sister won't kill me that much. Don't have the stilts on today guys, it's be a nightmare just to get it in there or find it somewhere to put the stuff, put it on it maybe in there, but hate dumping in there doors. It's not a great big area so class enough to hop up is not too bad. Again, just trying to be as neat as possible.
Why do you always get a bitchy nose or face when your skin and your hands are covered? Somebody answer me that. Here's another tip for these guys, I always fill these beads out till they're practically coated, so the next coat's very, very minimal. Find that when it comes to turning up, that's very, very beneficial to the whole game, guys, to the whole job. So, if, if your beads are heavy, try to, if they're really heavy, these aren't too bad because I bonded them, but if they are really heavy, you know, you can put a wee lick on them, coat everywhere else and then come back. First coat, right over the top, you know. So, see you there, I'm not a hustle. Obviously guys, if you just can turn the electric off, turn it off, I do have that dropped, but I'm taking the time going around it, not going too crazy. So if you just can, turn it off and use the sockets for lighting, but I just want every little bit of light that I can get. So this is the, the first coat on, and I'll co come back in a second here, I'm going to wash my trowel up and get the second coat on for you. So this is the second coat guys. Um, put on a nice stickish coat, wash my towel up, um, set my hop up up and stuff, and didn't give it much time. Just gonna head straight on it. Should be okay for such a small area. Need it. Let the suction with the first coat there pull down a wee taste as well, so not too bad. So far, things are going better than usual I would say. I don't mind this method of the make good bond with this car at all. Try and keep it as neat as possible guys.
that said, looks just under a bag of carnate skin, a good quarter, nearly a third, so um, just more than half a bag really on this scene. So just give you an idea guys of what, what you need to mix. Um, I am not a low, but that was the idea, I don't want to be having had a bit of a waste of bond there, I don't want to be wasting material. It's just more stuff to clean up and end up. I'm gonna have to name this this one uh, plastering tips. <laughs> this, this video is just completely full tips. So I have the scene all on there, as you know, two coats um, was the same mix. I would advise people newer to the trade to possibly just go with two, two smaller mixes. Um, but what, what I do after I have it all in, just before I flatten down, I scrape out my bucket. So as you can see here, this bucket here is it's more or less clean and I'll leave a wee drop whatever's left on the hawk and hopefully you don't, you don't have loads left and what that does is that will give you a wee bit of insurance guys if the legs of this here bead here is you know you need need more plaster on that you find when you're traveling in you're quick flattening in that it's got to be hollow in it then that's time for you guys to fill it out with another wee drop of gear um, so if you throw it in the skip or in the bin or in the bag full of rubble, it's I wouldn't you know it's not going to be great for using. So I advise keep a wee drop um, of what what you have left over. Um, I don't want these all mixing loads too much and wasting it. But if there's a wee drop left over, keep it. And what I do is then I'm going to flatten all this in and possibly clean my angles, wash my bucket scrape that bit of plaster off the hawk but I'll not dump it still I'll keep it on either a board or you know an, an empty bag I'll put it on the top so that I can get access to it if you know whatever I need to be taste God knows how many times that the labour on site has cleared everything up and cleaned out and then something happens there's a wee scratch on the ceiling or something or a wall or you've dug your trowel in and you need an extra wee bit to fill it in and you ain't got it so that's your wee bit of insurance guys and a wee tip will help you out and so let's get back to working. Now see when you're doing them beads, the way I do it is trowel, trowel towards the bead and then pull along that bead guys. You're going to come along it, if you trowel like that there eventually be a big curve in it, there'll be an arch in it and that's probably not too bad on this because it built it out with bottom but if that was just a, a bead on 3-4mm coat then most likely it'll curve the same as this fish eye lens so you want to always come across there and that'll kill any of that happening on this <laughs>
I'm going to stretch across that big heel and here. So if we pull up on that, we'll just create a, a curve. At this stage, make sure everything's cleaned up, guys. Tools, buckets, drill, the whole lot, because after that, this stuff could pick up and you'll not have much time to get it trialed and clean up. So keep that in mind. Right, so guys, I'm going to be busy editing, editing all these clips, but I wanted to come up here to this part of the scene. I'm still, we're still in this hallway, and um, talk about these beads. So, for instance, I've put a stop bead here, as you know, and this is timber, so I wouldn't recommend plastering over timber, guys. But obviously, we're going to have this wee gap here to contend with, and we've got to make that right. And uh, bring this right in close. See it? We we gap just between the bead and the ceiling, but um, probably should use a wee trial or something. But most times I just push a wee bit of gear in, guys, and just finger it into the gap there, and that all get is to have stuff in behind that. Later on, la later on you can scrape it back and brush it up, I'll, I'll tidy it up, I can't do it here with holding the camera, but I'll tidy that up a wee bit more with a, a tosser brush even, even a tosser brush instead of your finger, you don't want to be cutting your finger on the beads, sometimes you get a wee nick on them and it will open you, open you up. Um, there's another wee thing here I want to talk about, the tap angle, let's walk up the stairs, so obviously this is my plaster and like I said these walls aren't getting done, this is actually wallpaper so I have to be very careful. I don't get too much water in. I know the walls were not easy stripped, so I don't have too much concern of the paper getting wet and coming off paint on them also. But I'm gonna show you how I deal with this edge. If I show you up close, I have overlapped it slightly. And what I'll do later is I'll cut that all off, but I want that to pick up a bit. You can see it's very wet. So after about three trials, I'll pick that up um, later on, later on in the video, and I will get that scraped back and toss up brush nice and neat, guys. Um, first time you do something like that will not be very easy. And yes, I could have put a stop bead on um, there, but I didn't think it would be as neat as what as I'm doing here. I think this was the neatest way to go to feather it in and clean off that edge. Um, again, yes, you could use a stat bead if you're not confident doing this and put it in flush. Sometimes what you find with stat beads is, guys, um, they'll bring a whole whole new world of problems. Stat beads are straight. If this top wall here has a big big bow in it, which sometimes they do, um, if it has a big bow in it or, again, a big bump, you're going to find you're going to have to patch this in as well and it's going to be a nightmare. So sometimes this option, you know, even if you cut your bead, sometimes this may be the better option. But yeah, I'll come back to this part later on after I get all my trials up. So this is pretty much the first wet trial. Now, I do sometimes call the other trial a trial, but really it's a flatten. But you can call it a, a trial in if you want. But really, this is the stage where you might want to start adding water and the reason for that is just to basically lubricate the trowel so it doesn't tear the plaster any um, and the later stages you go the more water you'll most likely need to add to stop the turn happening and basically here you want to just get everything filled out as best as possible get your angles as cleaned as possible the cleaner they are now the easier they'll be to clean every stage so you're always wanting to they make it that wee bit better. I think there's actually a, a Japanese term for it called Kaizen and what the word Kaizen means or what the term means is small improvements so you know I think it's actually a really good term and a good a good way of thinking guys because if you move if you constantly make small improvements so take this ceiling for example every child I get I'm trying to actually do one even better, even better, even better. Every ceiling I do, if I'm trying to make it a better ceiling than the last one, better, better, better. Every job, better, better, better. Cleaner, cleaner, cleaner. You see where it goes, guys? 
and you can see keep the back of the child clean and it'll also help your angles stay clean but basically if you adapt that word kaizen into your work life for plastering or just into your life in general and you're always trying to make small improvements it's easy to make small improvements guys it's harder to make big massive leaps but if you just make the small improvements then o over time they'll add up and accumulate to being large improvements and it'll be a lot greater of a leap then in small steps and hopefully that's this channel is all about for for beginners and people new to the trade or trend home improvements that you'll find that with these videos you can start off with the ones with less detail a wee bit more simple and build up into the, the more the, the ones like this and you'll 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 see your own self improve from video to video time by time so hopefully you've enjoyed that wee word lesson so just remember kaizen guys small improvements so every trial you do you're trying to beat that trial the next time you're trying to improve on it every angle you clean oh next time you go around oh, trying to improve on it trying to make it better i don't have much more trial to do and um, mostly just the finishing stage isn't it i would say another two wet trials and a quick polish will have a ceiling finished you can see a a couple of wee bits and pieces still just to trial out um, as it picks up and uh, a wee bit of blistering going on up around my bead but that's just because it's a wee, wee bit heavier than the rest of the scene nothing to be too concerned about um, I think this is the stage where most people actually drop off on my videos watching and I think it's because everything looks done but we're far from done there's still lots of clean up and uh, a few more wee tips and tricks possibly to come here if we can if we can actually get a bit of time to get this up close I'll bring it back up here again as well to show you how these angles are coming in um, a wee bit dirty up on that one there and the reason for that is that the wall's actually hooked in so my child's not going all the way in um, but again we're not doing the walls not today anyway perhaps another time um, so you can see I've just quickly cleaned this just with the, the big brush actually, not even with the tussle brush. Now don't don't wash don't wash it too much guys because you'll weaken the plaster, you'll dilute the plaster and what happen is you know it'll it possibly just crack in time. So you want as much plaster in there as possible. You don't want to be washing it out and diluting it. So again, these angles here. It's all about angles and beads and corners guys plastering and um, obviously the middle counts too but you know p things people will will pick up on will be the likes of these corners now this looks terrible at the minute and uh, looks very rough and that's because it is <laughs> i'm not lying guys the the reason for that is i'm gonna keep trial out flat i want to make sure i've got plenty of plaster along this top edge and then I'll run my trowel along when it picks up. This is a wee bit about timing. Um, my old boss was an absolute genius at these. Um, so I picked it up off him. And my uncle as well taught me a couple of wee bits and pieces about it as well. Um, so there are, it's picking up nicely now. You can go at it a wee bit early, but again, I, I like it to pick up so that I don't chip too much of this corner. Again, yes, it will be weaker than a bead, um, so it'll have some downsides to it, but again, it'll be easy touched up and painted again. So we'll, we'll get to this shortly. Not starting at the bottom of this one, starting at the top this time, and working my way down. Already got that top child in. And the reason for that is I'm bringing all my water down to the bottom to that bead and that will be easier to clean the dirty water and the fat away from the plaster. You can take the angles down with me. Sometimes it will be important just to run the trowel down the middle of these two guys because if you keep trowel like that you can create a bit of a bump similar to what I was talking about at the beads although here sometimes you don't have much of a choice either 
have to weigh that up, guys. Weigh up your options. What's going to be best? Don't forget that tidy up that wee bit of bead that I showed you earlier, the wee bit we had to fill in. Um, as you let the stuff get too too hard, you'll not be able to tidy it up at all either. And you can see, I'm just trying to smooth it with the towel before I wash off the top part with the brush. Um, and I suspect that should be okay. Again, you could leave them out and put a flexible caulk in there. Right, so guys, um, another wee quick tip, you just see me hit that a second wet trial, give it all a flatten in, give it a quick clean round the angles, a bit of a wet trial, and then that was the wettest trial, running the brush on it, see a wee bit there, always, always look up guys, get down, look up round as well, you'll always, always find something that you can tidy up a wee bit more before the next stage, but just wanted to 
give you this other wee tip here, just so after you use trowel, you will have just a tiny bit of fat. You shouldn't be wanting to absolutely rip the life out of the scene. And basically, you're gonna have to clean this off before it gets hard. Um, and you'll always wanna trowel that off the scene as well, guys. And you can still use this to fill in and stuff, but I'm gonna show you a wee, wee trick. So basically, down with the water bucket here, um, so what 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 I usually do is I usually scrape it off on the inside and the wee tip here is having a bag underneath that'll dry up anything and any drips and drops but so usually I do scrape it off on the inside and that's so the, the plaster falls in but if you do have the bag on the outside what you can do is scrape it on the outside of your bucket that will keep your water cleaner for longer and then when this falls off falls on to the bag so it's, it's easy cleaned up guys so this video this video is literally jam-packed with tips and tricks so I think that will be the title of this video is plastering fee log on YouTube with plastering tips throughout but I just have to chalice this wee bulkhead up now and hopefully sooner and later I can get get this on to the how I finish that top wee angle off. Our wee hip here is ready to cut back guys. So I'll try and do this up close for you so you just get an idea of what I'm doing here. And you can see it's still still quite soft. So it'll still it'll still scrape back but it's firmed right up just the way I want it. So I'll show you this here now. The way I go about these. So most times if you can, start at the far end, but on this occasion I can't, so I'm gonna cut. And you'll always wanna keep the back of the trowel clean so that the end bits there don't rough up the front. But we're gonna trowel this again and tussle brush all this as if it was a, a corner. Well, it is a corner, but I mean an internal corner. Sort of same idea. It's very hard to do this, guys, with one hand, but these are getting the idea of what way to go. What way I go about it anyway. It's a wee bit difficult there because there's like a funny, funny wee indent on the the wall itself. You can see there's still like a pattern of where the paper was and stuff and joint. But continue on. So just really scissoring it off, sawn it off, flush both sides. You can use the top of the trowel as well, guys, just like so. It's not really, it's not that difficult when you sort of know what you're, what you're trying to achieve. And then later on, I'll do this with a wet trowel, but I'll trowel that all up again and wet this edge up, and it'll tidy it all the way up. A bit difficult to do it with one hand here, but. I'll try and get the tripod up after tripod up after I trail up the the bottom ceiling here shortly. That's that tidied up there, guys, and trail that right the way down to the bead. Still a couple of wee snatters on there, um, but you can see how tidy it's come up. Um, we're getting close here at the minute, but I'll bring us bring us right in close here. Um, obviously, you're still at the the mercy of whatever shape that wall is to follow and stuff as well. But to me, this is a clean enough way to go. Uh, I still have another bit of tidying up on this to go yet. Um, and just, just tidy it up, just make it look a bit sharper as it sets. Um, don't, don't be afraid, guys, to try and improve it. Again, you could use a rule. You could tack a rule on and work to the rule and cut it off, but then you, that's more issues. You're gonna have holes and stuff to fill. And, you know, it's, you know, it's all the same. It's all the same, guys, it really is. Um, the more times you do it, the better you get, but I'll bring this up close. And, you know, there's no hiding in plastering, guys. Everybody's gonna see it. So, if you can see it, the customer will see it. But, this is it. Pretty much up close, guys. Um, still another wee bit of tidying up to do. You can still see my, my brush marks lately in it. But, you know, you're really gonna be looking at sort of from here in the most. And again, when that's painted as well, 
Uh, shoes come in nice and sharp. <clears throat> Just on the, the very last trial, and I'm going to use my handy dandy Super Flexi, Rafina Super Flex 3 just to pull out this last corner here and honestly I wouldn't leave home without it guys it's definitely a game changer so if you haven't moved on to super flexes or you haven't got one yet I recommend the super flex 3 from Afena it's pretty good and um, so yeah I'll give you a wee clip after I get this swiped in and let you see the end product of what has been a stipple seal that's been bonded out with Make Good Plaster, Make Good Bottom Coat and then has been skinned with Carlite Ultra Finish so Carlite Skin to me is probably the nicest skin to use guys so it's really really up your shelves, it's the same thing you could do everything I've done with Multi Skin and Thistle Bonding and with Carlite Bonding with Carlite Skin you could do the whole lot the exact same just, just with different plaster um, again, this has so far so good, and the big one in there, again, that was quite similar. Only with the bonding, I actually did some carite bonding in with that one. But yeah, get you another walk around later on. Let me pull this corner in to get home. This is it, guys. All gone gusted. You can see it colour around the edges and stuff. Um, just let this have a wee juke. Our sharpets come in there along the bead to the other bead. Again, up the top, all finished in nicely. Getting a bit dark up there now. Let me show you this. Again, just played with it a wee bit more, got it in a wee bit tidier. Um, but, again, guys. I don't know if you are getting taught that in tack or anything or anybody else is showing this but I want to show every detail possible and hopefully I've achieved that. Not a, not a, a massive amount of work done today but I'm still feeling a bit tired. But, um, and again if, if you were doing this first time like you probably would be very tired guys. So I do recommend trying to start things as small as you can. And again, we've got loads of demos and hard who's on the channel, and as always, more to come. And if you can't wait for more to come, like I say, there's about 400, 500 videos there you can get stuck in. So, catch us on the next one.